my strength is failing. The end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then this morning on this beautiful summer Sunday morning. I'm glad you made time uh, to praise God. And uh, we are in the midst of a sermon series on welcome, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, we're in the midst of a series series on uh, our values that are on a card in, in your pews. You could take those pew rack cards home with you and share them with neighbors or put them up at your house to remind yourselves what we're about here at Messiah. Uh, today we're uh, working on fellowship and what it means to be in fellowship with one another and what that calls us to be and who to be. Uh, let's continue with this last song at this opening. the children that Moses led. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the The children of the Israelites
Must be the children that's coming through. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the each other this morning. God's peace, Leslie. God's peace, man. <laughs> Sophia, God's peace. Yeah. <laughs> Howard, God's peace. Uh, uh, got all the cousins today? That was good stuff. Huh? God's peace. God's peace. <laughs> God's peace. Hi, Amy. God's peace. Hi, Jane. Hi, Dean. God's peace. Brent. God's peace. Dean, your hands are like uh, sandpaper. <laughs> I know, like we're out. They're just with his hands, not even. <laughs> hey, uh, children. Hey, God's peace. Children. Uh, Pastor Liz uh, did, said she didn't want to see anything about you. To so just tell them to leave. So Sally. So if you want to go to uh, a children's Sunday school, Sally will take you right now. So anyone? You guys going to go to Sunday school, Aubrey? Uh-oh. I say an eye roll. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. There you go. <laughs> and we're here, uh, I think Sarah. She's coming. Sarah, um, Sarah Hartman uh, is on break from Wittenberg University, and she's going to give us a good gift uh, uh, before she heads back. Judy is accompanying her on the piano.
A reading from the first letter of Peter. First Peter, the fourth chapter, verses eight through 11. Above all, show sincere love to each other because love brings about the forgiveness of many sins. Open your home to each other without complaining and serve each other according to the gift each person has received as good managers of God's diverse gifts. Whoever speaks should do so as, the, as those who speak God's word. Whoever serves should do so from the strength that God furnishes. Do this so that in everything, God may be honored through Jesus Christ. To him be honor and power forever and always. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene stood near the cross of Jesus. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me for a moment. God, we give you thanks for gathering us here in this place. Speak to us. Open our hearts, our minds, our lives to receive your word so that it might take root and bear fruit. In your name we pray. Amen. What is fellowship? I'm going to make y'all work. So you tell me, what is fellowship? When you hear this word, what, what comes to your mind? Just throw it out. Relationship. Get together. Having fun. Is that what I heard? Sharing. Sharing. Anything else? Eating together. Good food, preferably. Anything else? When you hear fellowship, what do you think? Conversations. Friends. Welcoming. Anything else? All right, I'm done. No. <laughs> No, these are all things that I came up with as well. Food was at the top of my list. Because <laughs> nothing really beats, you know, sitting around a table, having a good meal. Uh, I have a, a best friend and I who are really, we're what you would call foodies. And so if we ever go out to a restaurant, we have to both pick a meal that we're going to share. Because we can't just eat one. We have to try all the things. And it's good conversation and good times, so having fun over a meal, over coffee. I do office hours for the teenagers at Five Bean, because what's better than just showing up, having cards there, and having someone buy you fancy coffee drinks? It's good time to surround around food. And Jesus certainly was all about food and meals, too. I mean, he got into trouble uh, with his meals and who he ate with. He got a reputation. Many of our stories involve food, even our sacrament. And conversation is definitely a part of all that. I mean, what is a meal if it's in silence? Then you kind of figure something's a little off today. But you want good conversation, sharing, laughter, storytelling. You want to have a, a good time. But it's also not always the good stuff, too. You know, it's the tough stuff. Fellowship opens up spaces where we can share our struggles, 
our fears, our regrets, you know? There, there is also that space, because that's true fellowship. Because the deeper it goes, the stronger it becomes, the more likely we're able to be vulnerable with one another, to share with one another what we're going through. I mean, what I've often found when we take our teens off to a mission trip, the best part of that for me is by the end of the week, there tends to be a whole lot of vulnerable sharing because they fellowship together. They've had fun. They've thought about things. They've sang. They played games. But now they also get to share. Fellowship brings about true, true deep sharing. Now, all of this comes more easily with people we know. Amen? I mean, that's just, that's just the natural thing. People we already know or that we think we've got something in common with or that we're the same age or the same peer group. We're on the same track of life. That tends to be our natural thing. But when we talk about fellowship in the church, I mean, you've heard it, you've seen it. We're always being pushed even further out of just those natural bounds of community and fellowship. We're being pushed out of where we just kind of fall into to try to have fellowship with many people people who are strangers to us, people who are on different tracks of life, building community. The way we've defined this value, fellowship, we came up with a statement. It's on those cards. It says, God gives us to one another to be in relationship. We gather in many ways to build a community that loves serves, and encourages. And we've already named a lot of ways in which we build community. For me, when I was thinking about this value, I went back to my days in college. I went to college in Washington, D.C., which was really far away from my home in Chicago. And so I was pretty much plucked out and into a totally different environment and community And at some point, I started going to a small, non-denominational church in Southeast D.C., which was even further from my university. Janine knows we went to the same university, she can tell you. It's on the other side of the city. But I would travel there and go to this small little church, and I could only be there on Sunday mornings. You know, I mean, that was impressive for a college student, right? I wasn't going to show up for anything else. But I remember how much they welcomed me. And I especially remember one couple who called me up and invited me to dinner, invited me to their home, opened up their home, cooked a meal. And at 19, when you ain't eating at all, because you live in a dorm room, this was hallelujah. And we sat at their table And we ate this meal, and they just invited me into conversation. And when I think about it now, I'm like, you know, who wants to sit around with a 19-year-old, right? This married couple who are on a very different track, who are in a different place, who, who they, I would have thought nothing about the fact that they didn't invite me. I wasn't expecting this at all. And yet they did open their home to me. We could give all kinds of answers as to why would they do it. You know, we could ask why, what made them open up their home. Could say love, service, pity. And all of those things might be true. You know, as I was really reflecting on our statement that we've made about fellowship, The first line is what really stood out to me. God gives us to one another. God gives us to one another. Now I imagine what that looks like to live that out. That when I walked through the doors of that little church and I kept showing up, they saw me as one who had been given to them. 
a gift to receive. And because they received that gift, they gave themselves to me. And I was able to receive. God gives us to one another. I noticed this in our first Peter text, his use of each other, love each other, open your homes to each other. Each of you have been given a gift, share with each other. God gives us to one another, God gives us to each other. That's a really amazing statement, y'all. Just pause and think about that. Because that means that the person behind you, or in front of you, or next to you, the stranger you have yet to meet, God has given them to you. They are a gift to you. Whether you think you like them or not. This is the beauty of it. And it also means that you have been given to them. That that person behind you or in front of you, beside you, that stranger you have yet to meet, you have been given to them. You are a gift. You are a gift. A gift that God has shared. It's an amazing statement to make that we have been given to one another. And, you know, I, I kind of just cracked the joke about, you know, whether or not you like them. But, like, that's real, right? Amen? I know that some of y'all thought of someone who you were like, yeah, that's who I was thinking about. And yet the truth is God has given them to you, and you have been given to them. And there's all kinds of things that can get in the way of receiving that gift. You know, that, that whether or not we like them, or this feeling of whether they fit, they fit in how we think they should fit, or whether we've gotten used to the way things are, the ways we fellowship, or who we fellowship with. You know, we got our group. It's all good. We don't need any more. We can come up with all kinds of reasons not to receive the gift. Judgments, attitudes, how they look, how they talk, how they act. But they're different from us. Sometimes, though, it's, it's that we don't see ourselves as a gift. Sometimes it's that we, we don't think we have anything to give. That we aren't a gift that God has given for someone else to receive. And here, God still says, I have given you to one another. It's why we talk of love and serve and encourage, but most of all, love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love forgives all sins, because when we are given to one another in relationship, things get messy. Amen? Someone, when we get into relationship with one another, you know, that means we get into one another's mess, and they get into our mess. We need God's love, and God's strength, and God's forgiveness, and God's grace, God's hope. Because that's where it all stems from, where it flows, this fellowship. At the traditional service, we sang, what a fellowship. What a fellowship, leaning on the everlasting arms. Our fellowship with Christ leads to our fellowship with one another. Because God does the giving. God gives us the strength. God gives us the courage to love. 
God gives us the words to speak. God gives us the help to open our homes and welcome. And it is no small gift. It is no small gift. It may have seemed unusual, my gospel text selection today, just this little snippet from Jesus on the cross. And I was surprised that I even thought of it this week. It kind of came out of nowhere because I've always just thought of it as Jesus, you know, looking out for his mama. But it took on new meaning when I Heard it through these words, God gives us to one another, Christ gives us to one another. Because even there on the cross, Jesus is giving to one another. Woman, here is your son. Son, here is your daughter or your mother. And what does the son do but take her into his home? Open your homes to each other without complaint. The very meaning of Christ's ministry is shown in that moment you have been given to one another. Something so simple and yet so life-changing that that couple treated me as a gift given to them. And I was able to receive their gift given to me. So go and fellowship today, people of God. Go and fellowship. You know, if you've always skipped coffee and cookies in the fellowship hall, go get some. And if you've always gone, go sit at a table where you've never sat before with people you've never met. And that's really hard for us introverts, I know that. You know, we can just all congregate near the coffee and create a small group. And the extroverts can come find us. But go step out. Go find a way to fellowship. And if it is not coffee and cookies, let it be something else. Come to Messiah Night. Switch up your seat. Join a small group this fall. Fellowship with others in that group. Cook a meal for someone. Invite a college student to dinner. Go to pub theology. Share with one another over a drink. Invite someone to go with you. Go in fellowship. Do all the things we listed, food, laughter, grief to, share. We have been given to one another. And ministry, all that we do here, will come with greater, bigger, more beautiful fruit because of it. Because when we live out that truth, When each of us are a gift and are received as one, Christ, who is the giver, will strengthen us to love, serve, and encourage one another. Amen.
Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. We praise you. We thank you, for you see us and you know us, and you have called us into your fold, and you have given us to one another, to love, to serve, to encourage. God, love and encourage us. May we receive the gift of your love, and be changed. Send us out into a world that longs for the same gift. We pray for those places in our world that are struggling in violence and war, hunger and poverty, God, we pray for your light, a light that cannot be diminished. We pray for our community, for violence in homes and in streets, for those who are struggling with addiction or depression or grief. God, may you be their comforter. May you be their hope. We pray for all those who are struggling with illness, those in the hospital, those with chronic illness. We pray especially for those in our church community, for Kimberly Beery, Meg Ridler, Harlan Sapi, Christine Ickes, Susan Franklin, Lauren Blake, Holly Hessler, Mary Hodge, Julie Searles, Karen Butler, Tracy Shurick, Nicole Bunce, Roberta Hammond and her granddaughter, Helen Schoenhardt's granddaughter, Sally, Roger Solt, Debbie Drum, Elisa Limbers, Kathleen Botley, Martha Keplin, Lee Waddell, Shirley Clark, Andy Sir, Don Searles, Paul Newell, Madison Epperly, Dan Porta, and others we name in this moment. God, we give you thanks for laughter and joy, for st- storytelling and conversation, for the many many meals we've shared with one another. And we thank you for the meal that your son shared with us as we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, in this meal, in this place, in our very hearts, fill us to overflowing. Fill us with your power and your strength and send us out. As we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. 
All are welcome to this meal. We invite you um, to partake in the bread and the wine. We'll have our communion assistants come forward first, and then all are welcome.
Please stand. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, fed and nourished at your table, may we go out and be your people, giving ourselves in love to one another and receiving each other in love at the same time. Amen. Uh, just a few announcements before we scatter for the day. <clears throat> One is that this is our week on Saturday to do furniture ministry. If you want to help me help out with the furniture ministry, please contact me. That's uh, Joseph's Coat off Broad Street. I'll give you all the information. We work from 8 uh, and we're always done before noon. Um, and Joanne Barrett, who's our member who runs the ministry, she just told me there's nothing but light furniture this week, so, so we are set. So please, call me and let me know, and, and I'll get you signed up for that. Call the church office or email me. And uh, the other thing is we are serving dinner twice in our community. Once on Thursday afternoon, we are going to Ronald McDonald House at Children's Hospital. If you want to be part of that, let the church office know. And, uh, and they will hook you up with that. Kay Arnold runs that ministry. If you know her, you can talk to her directly. Uh, that's Ronald McDonald House, on, uh, and we serve there at noon, a lunch. And then that evening, we are at First English. That evening, we are at First English uh, and Main Street, and uh, they have a Thursday morning, and, or Thursday evening, and a Sunday morning community meal that they offer for their neighbors. And we take, uh, every now and then, we take the Thursday night meal. So that's this week, Thursday night, at First English. If you want to be part of that, call the church office. Pastor Liz is in charge of that meal. You can also talk to her and be involved with that. And then finally, Meditation in Motion is back. Um, and uh, it's uh, led by Doug Arnold. It's a nice uh, combination of, uh, of meditating, getting uh, closer to God by being quiet and focusing and also some light impact movements uh, that help you do that. And, and holistically, you just end up feeling better. So I, I, I lift it up. We're going to do it in the afternoon, on Tuesday afternoon, and on the evening, on Wednesday evening. So you got two different opportunities to take part of that. Uh, so there you go. Uh, let's uh, end with our blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen.